Hello and happy Monday. Just going to fix my tripod here, adjust it, and wait for my beautiful guest to join me. I see her right now. Hi, Erica. I'm just going to fix my tripod here and then I'm going to invite you on. We'll see. I'll adjust it when you're on with me. Okay, so I've done Erica. And welcome to everybody who's joining us so far. Eric and I are online friends and we are meeting in person in November. And I'm so excited to also chat with you today. Hi, <laughs> Hi Erica. Good to see you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm so glad that you agreed. So let's see, I feel like this is wobbly and a little bit awkward, but we will run with it. Yes, uh, does it look okay on my end? Yeah, you look perfect. Okay, I just, we just moved this weekend, so I have my phone set up on a moving box, and my house is in disarray, but I'm here. I'm excited. Awesome, I'm glad you are. So I'm just going to, Erica, can you um, adjust your volume at all, um, make it a little bit higher? I can try, like on my phone, or? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, well, you moved okay. closer, so maybe that's why it changed a little bit, but. Um, okay. Okay, good. So bear with us, everybody, because these Facebook Lives are never perfect, but I don't think Erica or I aim for perfection anymore, right? Nope, we're over it. <laughs> okay, so um, the topic of today is we're going to chat about introversion, loneliness, um, self-acceptance, and some practical tips, hopefully, for like, how do we form friendships in various seasons of life? And um, there are some specific reasons, Erica, why I wanted to talk to you about this, partly because of the work you're doing in the world, um, but also I think it's fun to come at it from our different perspectives, our different seasons of life, right, where I am um, launching big kids into the world. So I have a couple that are out of the home, graduated university or in university, um, and my baby's 13, and then you have some younger kiddos. And do you want to just tell us yeah, the ages my, of your kids? My kids are 10, 8, and 5. So yeah. Yeah, so it's fun because really, younger. really different seasons of life. They mm -hmm. feel really different, and they're both full, and they're both lovely, and there are some specific challenges that come up in terms of how do we meet people, and how do we form friendships, and all of that. Right. But, um, I like that. Yeah. Okay. So um, before I forget, because I, I feel like I know you well-ish and um, I want to make sure that everybody else knows you. So Erica writes and runs um, the Life on Purpose movement and the Life on Purpose school. Yeah. Right? That's, that's okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's called the Life on Purpose movement. You can find me there on Facebook. Um, and I've been doing it for years and years, I think. I think I started blogging when my oldest, who's now 10, was a baby. So almost 10 wow. years, which is unbelievable. But um, it's evolved over, over that decade into what it is now. And I do have a course for introverted moms because I found that when I became a mom, that's when I first really started noticing um, and grappling with my introversion. And mm -hmm. I wanted to help other moms through that. Um, so yeah, I do that and a few other things. <laughs> yeah, so I think a few things will come up as we chat today. Yeah. Um, yeah, all right, so let's start. We're talking, now I think that this will be helpful potentially for moms who identify or women who identify as introverts or extroverts, but we will have a bit of a focus on the introversion partly because again that is part of your work but also because you and I both identify I think as strong introverts right is that accurate yeah I'd say so yeah okay. I'm a, I'm on the Myers-Briggs I'm an INFJ so we are called the extroverted introvert so I am strongly an introvert in that I cannot survive or be my best self without time to myself to re recharge mm -hmm. and process my life but I'm also uh, pretty friendly and uh, happy to chat with people, um, introvert. So yeah, we're, but I think we both are really strong introverts and I always admire the way you honor your introverted nature. So thank you. Thank you. It's, it's taken some practice though. 
And I, wa- I definitely want to talk about that when we chat about self-acceptance, because what a huge difference when we can learn to like ourselves, understand why we are the way we are, see the gifts, and then just show Absolutely. up in the world with that ease, you know, yeah. as, as opposed to self-judgment. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am an ISFJ on the Myers-Briggs. So we're pretty similar. We <laughs> Yeah. And I'm also a chatty introvert. So I need a lot of solitude or else I crumble, but I will talk to strangers when I travel. But I, of course, I want to deep dive into their personal stories and I want to hear all the nitty gritty. I don't want to stay on the surface. (laughs) So (laughs) that's a funny thing. All right. So let's um, just do a define very quickly um, what the difference, the key difference as we see it between introversion and extroversion and just in case that serves. So do you want to share a definition? I think that the strict definition is that introverts um, are predominantly interested and concerned with our own mental lives, our our internal worlds. And extroverts tend to be more concerned with and interested in, in what is outside of themselves. But the place where I think we see um, the difference the most is where we recharge. And mm-hmm. Susan Kane really brought this to like our consciousness um, with her TED talk that went really viral and then her book, um, Quiet. But the idea is just that introverts need a lot of time and space to themselves in order to recharge and reprocess the world and return as their best selves. Whereas extroverts um, derive energy from being with people. So mm-hmm. we just, we just recharge very differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's one isn't good and one isn't bad. Right. We're different and gifted. Yes. Yeah. And I think that what I, I so appreciate Susan Cain's work as well. And the, the, even though I was very clear that I was a strong introvert from a young age, um, I about six or seven years ago when it first came out I listened to the audio version of quiet the power of introverts in a noisy world or whatever it is Mm -hmm. and I loved it it felt so incredibly affirming Um, and I think that a lot of people really do have bought into the lie or the message that something's wrong with them they're a little bit broken or dysfunctional and it is so untrue like we are needed we are people who observe who reflect, who offer back deep, heartfelt, um, honest truths about the world. And we are, we are needed, right? So exactly. yes. Yeah, we tend, yeah. And, and we, our culture tends to be structured for extroverts, you know, the way we are educated and the way a lot of our workplaces are structured, even just with open office space plans. Um, mm-hmm. But so sometimes I think that that can make us as introverts feel like we're, there's something wrong with us, that we're a little broken. But making the shift and starting to see your strengths and really believe in yourself as an introvert is just such a more freeing way to live. Mm-hmm. Yep, agreed. All right, so I want to talk about how introversion impacts our primary relationships or friendships. So obviously this is a huge topic and we're just, we're not delving in deep. We're sort of scratching the surface. Not that introverts like scratching the surface, <laughs> but we are forced to <laughs> yeah, we don't, live we with don't the have time constraints. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, I know that it impacts our family relationships, right? Like, because if we have such a high need for some solitude and space to think, it can be really challenging to live with other humans. Um, and it certainly impacts our friendships. So I, let's talk about this just from our personal lens. So I'm just going to offer a few examples, just a few quick ideas of how I see it impacting my friendships. And then I would love for you to share your experience as well. So Mm -hmm. one example for me would be, I have a very small inner circle. Um, I have very little energy to offer, even though I need friends. I really do need other women in my life and I desire that. And it, um, I have very little energy to offer after I love my family and I tend to my own basic needs and, you know, I do some work in the world, like there's very little. And so I need women also who love me as I am and who can give me that space and, and not feel that 
like that's just okay. Right. So interestingly, my closest friends, none of them live in the same town as me. We have long distance relationships. We do travel to visit each other and we stay connected, but it's not the way that I think a lot of women feel you should be with friends in the world. Um, and so there's that. And I think that like one of my closest friends has sort of teased me that I like, I say, well, I'm lonely. I need, I need you. But then if she tries to kind of interact too much with me, I like push her back. Cause it's like, Oh, that's too much. So it's like a hard balance. Mm -hmm. noticing that and being able to have these women who like we're deeply invested in each other long-term, but we also can give each other space to just be who we are. It's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. I'd say, so what are we getting at here? You, my friendships. How does introversion, your introversion impact your friendships? What, okay. what has come up for you in that? Yeah. I'm just smiling because my current, um, my current friendships in the town that we live in, that's actually something we talk about all the time because when I first became friends with them, I was developing um, the e-course on introversion. And I don't think any of them had a large, like a knowledge of the difference between introverts and extroverts. So now they tease me all the time about needing space or like, oh, is this too much, Erica? Do you want me to back off? You know, but it's actually so freeing just to have just to come to our friendships with a sense of humor about it, I think. Um, mm -hmm. It makes me feel like I can be me and laugh about it and they can be them and it's just all okay. Um, yeah. So I love that. I also think that some of my good friends are friends I've met online, you know, through my work um, on the internet and I think that is a beautiful thing. And mm -hmm. sometimes we undersell that. Like we talk about social media as such a bad thing where I think mm -hmm. social media can be a great thing for introverts if it's used purposefully. Um, yeah. We don't want to use it to the point where we're um, comparing ourselves unnecessarily to other people. But if you are developing a relationship with somebody that you know online, like another introvert, that's a great, great way to, to um, foster a friendship. It doesn't even need to be face-to-face, -face, although hopefully you'll get to meet eventually, like we're going mm -hmm. to. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I so agree with you, Erica. And I want to even, I was going to, I wanted to touch on that even when we talk about tips for forming friendships, this idea that for me, social media, like Facebook groups, or just reading each other's blogs and then somehow connecting what a gift that has been in my life. One of my best friends, I met her over a decade ago or about a decade ago because she blogged right. and I, I we connected and we've met in person many times and or a few, several times at least. Mm -hmm. um, I am so grateful that it works for me, you know, and right. I think that it works for some of us. We don't feel quite connected in. We feel a little bit different or we struggle to find our friend groups in our local communities. That's and I think, true social media really can provide um, a, a really nice sense of community. And, right. and I do think, yeah, if we don't want to hide with that. Like we yeah. do still want to push ourselves a little bit to be involved or reach out or whatever. And we'll, we'll get to that. But in person. Yeah. Yeah. I and like I, I, what you said. I think you just said, I can't remember your exact wording here, but um, the idea that, you can do whatever fits for you and you can just accept that. So if you have a small group of friends in person, or if you have a very few um, friends, like, like you're saying, who don't live in your town, or you have a, a best friend that you met through a mom group um, on Facebook or whatever it is, like we just mm -hmm. have to make so much room to, for those, um, those kinds of friendships. It just, the way you do it is 100% okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I really love this because I feel like this all the time too. Like you and I are both online a decent amount because mm -hmm. our work is largely online and we hear the messages about the dangers of social media. And it's true. If it's sucking you or pulling right. you away from connecting with your children or your spouse or whatever, it's like, right. That's, there's a warning sign there. Absolutely. However, friendships online 
people, those are real friendships. Yeah. We hear the, like, they are real friendships and like they can become your inner circle, these mm -hmm. people. So I think we do need to just like kind of push back a little bit sometimes when we hear those messages that make us feel like, oh, I'm not living up to this expectation. Yeah. Like I should have friends yeah. locally. It's like, no, you should just be you and accept the gift <laughs> wherever exactly. you find friendship and community. Yes. So there's no should. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, in the past, I think I definitely, even like 20 years ago in the town where I live, I definitely didn't, I tried to, let's say I didn't respect my wiring. I, I really did buy in, even though I knew I had an idea that I didn't quite fit and, and everything, but I did still kind of not honor those boundaries. And I tried to be more social or whatever, like kind of like jump through these hoops or what was expected of me. And yet it just drained me so badly. And I had nothing left to give to my family or like, sadly, and sometimes I would like be really angry um, with my family and they hadn't done anything. I was just so incredibly depleted and I felt like my boundaries had been violated, but it was because I wasn't honoring my boundaries. Yes. And so I can look back and I think, man, like if I had only known that I was allowed to be who I am, I would have, you know, had this sense of greater peace. Mm -hmm. and, and then I can offer my gifts in a way that really comes from a place of like, this is, this is the truest me. And this is like my greatest contribution to the world. Um, exactly. Yeah. That's, so that's what we need. I love that you, mm -hmm. you wrap that around to um, how it was impacting your family, because sometimes I, I may not really be struggling with my outer friendships. Like things seem fine. Like I'm getting along great with my friends. I'm serving at church, I'm volunteering to school or what, whatever it is, you know, but I think that a lot of times that's where it impacts us most actually is at home because mm -hmm. that's where our barriers are, are, are gone, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So that's where, that's where it plays out in the home. And we want to make sure that our lives are in balance and that we have enough energy to really give to the people who matter most to us. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to, um, I'm not following my notes. I gave you very well. So, but I'm heading on to the next question. <laughs> um, so you, your course, um, and I was an affiliate, a, a joyful affiliate for it last mm -hmm. time it ran. It's called Talked Out, Touched Out, Learn to Thrive as an Introverted Mom. Yeah. And so through running that course, Erica, I'm wondering if there were some common issues that kind of kept surfacing that you heard um, from the moms taking your course related to making friends or loneliness. Right. Were there some common yeah, there issues? Yeah, definitely, definitely common threads. Um, in the very first lesson, we talk yeah. about about accepting ourselves and accepting our strengths. But I think in order to accept your strength, you kind of have to be aware of what you're perceiving as weakness. So we talk about those. And ones that I have a handful here that come up a lot. Um, a lot of times we use the word guilt. So I will show you those. I think I'm going to use guilt here, but I think what it really is is shame. Brene Brown has taught us that shame is a feeling, the feeling that we're not enough in some way. So guilt, mm -hmm. she differentiates it in that guilt is I did something bad and shame is I am bad in this way. Mm -hmm. Like we really make it our own. And mm -hmm. I think that's what it is, but I'm calling it guilt because it sounds a little scary to say shame. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so guilt or shame for needing so much time away from our family. A lot of women feel that. Mm -hmm. Guilt for wanting, not wanting to interact all the time with your kids. You know, kids just need to talk a lot. And, and especially if you're raising extroverts, like extroverts process out loud. So they will say like most of what they think. My husband is an extrovert and he'll throw out ideas that I'm often just not ready to hear. I'm like, oh, I can't hear that unless it's like something that we're ready to act on. But he's just brainstorming kind of. So a lot of times 
that intensity, whether it's like little kids who are literally crawling on you and you're nursing them and feeding them nonstop, it's just a lot of stimulation. So guilt for not wanting to interact with your kids all the time. Um, guilt for needing so much time to recharge. I've heard women say it makes them feel like they're not resilient because they just don't bounce back fast from, mm. from periods of high engagement. And then also feeling like they don't have any stamina. That comes up a lot. Um, let's see. Oh, no one to turn to for help or understanding because sometimes we accidentally become so independent and don't um, challenge ourselves to invest in our friendships. So we don't really, so we suddenly feel like we're um, on an island, you know, parenting alone or going through whatever struggles alone. So not having anyone to turn to loneliness and isolation, which we're going to touch on. And, um, oh yeah, another one that comes up a lot is just the idea that after spending a whole day with our kids or in some combination of with kids and working inside or outside the home, whatever it is that you're doing in the world on a day-to-day -day basis, then a lot of women tell me they feel guilt for having nothing left to give their partner at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I hear that all the time. Yeah. Um, and then another is just, just the struggle of not hitting the wall of introvert burnout. Um, I love this idea of, I recently read something about the idea of a breakdown and this philosopher, Elaine de Baton, I have no idea how to say the name, um, says that a breakdown isn't, um, it isn't just like a random piece of madness or malfunction, but instead it's a sign that our life isn't, um, meeting up with our personality or our values. So his, his words are, um, it is a very real, albeit very in, inarticulate bid for health. It's an attempt by one part of our minds to force the other into a process of growth, self-understanding, and self-development, which our brain has, up until this point, refused to undertake, or we have refused yeah. to undertake. So it's like there's this um, dis disconnect. And then I think sometimes we introverts, we like, we give so much of ourselves to the people around us and we don't honor our need for um, recharging time. And then all of a sudden we just like hit this wall, this introvert yeah. burnout, this breakdown, this like, I can't even see another person. <laughs> like my yeah. friend needs to get away from me. We snap, you know, and then we feel really awful about the way we acted when we hit that wall or had that breakdown. So mm -hmm. that's another thing that I, hear about and that I'm always um, working on myself, making sure that I don't get to that point. Yeah. Um, I've shared in another video some time ago that something that used to happen to me a lot was I would fall sick. Uh -huh. So I would push myself, push myself, not honor my boundaries. And then I would be like sick, but I was like, like I was genuinely sick. I get the flu or something, but I was almost happy because it meant I could cancel everything exactly. and like lay on the couch for a couple of days. And then slowly I was, it was, you know, it dawned on me, like, what if I built a life that actually honored my boundaries? And then, and I it literally don't get sick. Like it's very rare. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was like, I do think uh, our like, bodies, the mind body connection, our bodies play yeah. out what, is happening in our minds so yeah amazing so i think anybody listening if you're noticing these patterns right where where you know you're crashing mm -hmm. it could be that that it's just a call for attention it's just this your body mind or spirit is asking you please right. please listen i'm trying to talk to you yes. <laughs> um absolutely and we can and we really can learn to build a more sustainable life so um, one other thought is that I do, all my children are, I believe, introverts, mm -hmm. but they can be really talky. So we mm -hmm. are, two of my kids are like me, where we deep dive into like meaty, meaty conversations. So they could follow me around for hours telling me about what they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I can find that hard, but I do the same thing to people. <laughs> um, but the difference too there is that 
I think we then will also separate and we also all need extended periods of time apart from each other. But believe me, there can be times where I'm like, I was like, it was midnight and I'm like desperate for sleep, but my son is just like revving up. <laughs> he wants to talk to me. Wow. So, anyway. My, okay, my so husband always jokes that I'm going to be in real trouble when our kids get older because right now, like I want everybody, like desperately want everybody down by eight you know, preferably 7.30, because then right. I can have some time to myself. My older boys, mm -hmm. they're starting to hang, like they hang out in their room or read or do their Legos before they go to sleep. But at least I get to have my time of low engagement. But right. man, midnight conversations, I might have to put my extroverted husband on those. <laughs> yeah, well, let me know how that goes. <laughs> But again, that just sort of speaks to the sort of the idea of the, the different seasons of life, right? And how, so my, one of my beautiful sister-in-laws came to my house yesterday with her three little people, eight and under, mm -hmm. and like, they're so beautiful, but I, I, you know, I'm just looking and I'm just like, man, the energy these kids have. And I just feel like I want moms to just know, like, you know, you are depleted and exhausted and sometimes overwhelmed and you're okay like it's like that is so normal because like i'm just watching that buzz of energy and i'm like oh my gosh like yeah i'm so <laughs> grateful that like i i adore them but i'm like but i don't have to deal with that anymore 24 7 and so i just want you to know like if you're in that stage of life like we feel for you <laughs> we do it's intense yes it, it really is it as so close yeah Okay, well, um, so we heard a lot of these common issues and struggles of introverted moms, and um, you're not alone if you feel that guilt, if you, um, but we want to always move over into like hope and encouragement. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that Eric and I both were on this path ourselves of like learning to embrace who we are, to see the gifts, to let go of the judgment and the guilt or the shame. Um, and also to learn though how to take personal responsibility for setting these boundaries, right? The healthy boundaries are just saying like, I'm not bad because I need space away from my kids. In fact, I'm probably a far more joyful mom or even apart from your husband, because mm -hmm. you know, like that is okay too. And, and again, we hear a lot of stories about what it means to be a good mom, a good wife. But the thing is, is that those stories are usually they're like half truths or they're like illusion because we're, we're dealing with, it's almost like a fairy tale portrayal of something. And we need to kind of ditch the noise of that stuff so we can just say, look, but this is my reality. Um, we need time apart. And then I cut, we come together loving each other and wanting to hear each other. And so we have a right to, to love who we are and to, and to, to create a life that looks very different from the romantic comedies or from the, <laughs> your best friend's life or, or marriage. Right. Right. Yes. I actually, I mean, just a small to build on that in a small way. I have been listening to this marriage podcast and it was this couple and I really liked them and I like their style and their purposefulness. But I found that it was starting to make me feel a little bit more frustrated with my own relationship. And so I just said, you know, I think what they're doing is great. And a lot of people probably resonate with that. And I even enjoyed listening to it. But it just, it just wasn't working for me, you know? So sometimes you just have mm -hmm. to, do you have to see that and say, you know, that that's not for me because it's making me feel this or whatever it is and just be be willing to set those boundaries yep yes okay so um erica i'm also i'm in your facebook group um it's called well it's for introverted moms yeah so i can't remember the specific name yeah but... it's called the introverted moms club but okay i think if you oh my stomach is growling so oh. loud i hope you guys can't hear <laughs> okay, it <so. laughs> okay so one of the things that I really like about being in that group is that you're constantly, constantly emphasizing that, hey, this is a group where we celebrate our gifts or our strengths. We don't bash people. Yes. This isn't about bashing extroverts. This no. isn't about mocking or like no. being mean. This is about just a kind, encouraging place where we can recognize our gifts and lift each other up. So I love that. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, I, I yeah. try to jump in there regularly and keep keep reminding people because 
uh, it can be easy in a Facebook group to kind of rant about some interaction you had with somebody. I yeah. want to keep it like we all have plenty of noise in our life. So I want to keep it as positive as possible. I like like the funny memes about introversion um, mm -hmm. where we can kind of poke fun at ourselves. It's important just to take everything with some humor as long yeah. as they're not at the expense of anyone else because there is nothing wrong with being an extrovert, being an ambivert, you know, the world yeah. has room for all of us. Yeah. And I really love that too, because I have to work really hard in my own life. Like that's how I choose to show up in my own life mm -hmm. is to scan for beauty, see the gifts. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. also really, really importantly is to take personal responsibility. And this is a really, so this is a core pillar of my work is too, is this idea of self-awareness begets self-compassion. Yeah. And when we start walking in deeply rooted self-compassion, we, we, we care less, not maybe not, it's not that we don't care at all, but we care far less about what other people are up to or what they even think of us because we like us. And also we are far less likely to tip into judgment of others or criticism of others. So when, so it's like when we decide that we like who we are, we can kind of just move through the world offering a lot of grace and compassion to other people as well. That includes the people in our homes. <laughs> that includes our friends um, and certainly just the wider world. And I really like that because it's about taking responsibility for our own business, how we show up and, and choosing to contribute to building a world we want to live in versus tearing down. Yes. Yes. I, and, I love the way you work in the world because of all of that, because I could not agree more. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I feel like that from you though, too. So, because there definitely is enough anger and pain and, and struggle, and it doesn't mean we ignore struggle, but it means that we still, we say now, what, what do I do with this? Yeah. How, what, how do I show up in a way that does walk out my values? So, mm -hmm. um, so coming back to this idea of self-acceptance and self or self-awareness first, and then self-compassion. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to look at my, notes and see where I wanted to go. Well, actually, I think what I'm just going to say is, so I believe this is incredibly important work. And even if people walked away after this, don't walk away people, but like, if you had to, mm -hmm. um, I think this is the thing that maybe, maybe could be the most beautiful gift that either of us could offer to another woman is that the idea that you are amazing, exactly the way you are. And when you understand that truth, you will show up differently to every single relationship in your in the world. You will show up differently to your work. You will show up differently in service. You will just show up with more of a, I like to think of it as a quiet confidence because you're not needing to prove yourself. Um, you don't need to be different from who you are. And you can also just like other people's criticism or their own issues. It's like, it kind of just doesn't stick to you because you're like, you're okay. You're just okay. So Erica, yeah, this I, is a big I, journey. I completely agree. I think that there's just so much power. And this is something I'm working on in my own life in um, just accepting who I am and not letting everything around me in, you know, um, I talked to a therapist once about how at the time I was having a really hard time because I was just taking on everybody's feelings. And she described it as like, there were two ways of being one. One is, I want to say, I can't remember her terminology. It was like disengaged and enmeshed. I think enmeshed was like, you let everything in and disengaged was like, you let nothing in. And we kind of want to find, find like a middle ground where you can give people space to have their own feelings and thoughts, but also not to internalize them, you know? So sometimes I see this in, in, and for me, it's always easiest to see all of this in the home because that's like just this little microcosm. <laughs> so yeah. if, if my husband is like having a hard, a hard time with something, like he's irritable about something, we all get irritable. Um, there have been times in my life where I would let that in and make, that would make me feel yucky and irritable. And now yeah. I'm just kind of working on saying, okay, 
that's how he's feeling. You know, that, that doesn't mean I have to feel like that. And I think we can do that with so much. It just takes a lot of practice. Yeah. Just give yeah. It. So we could go off in so many different directions here because it is so important. So like, I like to think of that too, is I visualize, I just hand back that load. I'm like, is that mine to carry right now? Oh no, it's not. It's exactly. his. So I can just like hand it back. That's not mine. And I think introverts, we tend to be empathic people, you know, so we tend to right. take a lot more in than we need to. So yeah. it, it is just all a amazing journey of, um, accepting who we are letting other people including the people closest to you like it's easy it's easy to say oh i can let like that woman down the street be who she is but sometimes it's a lot harder in our own families like it's, it's harder to let your mom be who she is or your mother-in-law or your father-in-law or your husband you know mm -hmm. so letting people be who they are letting ourselves be who we are like standing standing like still and steady in our own quiet confidence, our own quiet strength. I always have used that, that wording too. I love the word quiet um, for us introverts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so it's, um, I, I guess I, I, this is so key. And if anybody watching now or in the, you know, watching the replay later, if you have questions about this, um, you, you have a particular question, a concern, whatever, ask us and we will watch for that and we'll try to support you in that because it's not an easy or a quick fix. This is actually a journey. This whole thing of moving into self-awareness, learning, for instance, even just understanding that we are introverts, that we do need time alone. Um, you know, that's one tiny, tiny piece of it. Understanding perhaps that we are a highly sensitive person or an empathic person. Um, you know, Erica said she's an INFJ. So that N is very like sort of this feely, intuitive, you know, sensing like the, all the, everybody's energy around her. Right. So um, <laughs> I'm an IS, but I, I consider myself a very highly sensitive person who has tended to carry the weight right. of the world on my shoulders. Right. Um, and I feel like I'm drowning sometimes in that. And so I've had to learn how do I create a space where I can operate with compassion in the world, but not carry the burden so that I can at least still breathe and show up yes. and just offer what I have. And a lot of that is like t tuning out the noise, mm -hmm. you know, like I don't follow the news mostly. I don't. I, I unfollow like there's not a lot of people I follow online I'm very very particular I'm very collective too yes yeah. yeah so that might be tangled up with your introversion if you're watching this you know and some of the um how you move through the world so I think we'll move on from this idea but ask questions if you have them because I still want to go on to this idea of loneliness and then practical tips for like how do we form friendships in different seasons of life so the idea of sort of like being a highly sensitive or empathic or feely person, you know, we might feel intense loneliness sometimes. And yet it's not that it's resolved by being around people. Mm -hmm. So if you confide in somebody, maybe even a trusted friend, and you express that you are feeling lonely, their solution might be, well, join in more, you know, come hang out with this more. But you're like, but I feel lonelier in a crowd than I do at home alone. Mm -hmm. For for those of us who are introverts and strong in for introverts in particular, loneliness isn't often about a need for being around people. It's something else. And this is that we can explore some of some of this. So do you want to launch in? Yeah, I just think it's a it's a need for connection. You know, we don't, we don't, at least I want to feel like I'm connected to other people and like I can share my real truths with them, with someone, you know, whether it's my husband or a few close friends, I think it's connection. Yeah. Right. So I agree. I need that connection, like I was saying. And, and, and for me, it's also the recognition that, you know, I love science. I love research. And it's, you know, we know that community and contribution are actually huge. Um, they have a huge impact on longevity yeah. and health and well-being. Exactly. That goes for introverts and extroverts alike. So mm -hmm. it, just because we're introverts doesn't mean we get off the hook. We yeah. are wired for <laughs> 
community and contribution. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Love and now my my undergirding faith and beliefs say that we are created on purpose. We actually have gifts to share, each one of us. And so it isn't that we have to look like anybody else or be like anybody else, but there's a thing in us. And I think that some loneliness might come because we haven't, we, we've decided that we're not good enough. And so we're not offering that thing we have to share, whether it's just that we are somebody who like offers a word of encouragement wherever we go, or we smile at every human, you know, we mm -hmm. make people feel seen or heard, or we mm -hmm. are a good, um, maybe we're like service oriented and we bake bread for our neighbors or we go into the, like whatever we do, it's like, I think yeah. we have this thing in us that is made to connect. Mm -hmm. And maybe we're sometimes waiting because we think that'll be found in another person, like a friendship that they'll meet that deep longing in us, but it isn't true. Mm -hmm. But maybe if we offer that which we have, you know, yeah. or even that which we need, right. that maybe that fills some of that, right. yeah. that loneliness. Yeah, it just reminds me of the idea of authenticity. You know, if you're, if you're not living and bringing your most authentic self to your close relationships, then I don't think you're going to get that connection that you're looking for. So I like that, being willing to bring your... Bring your truest self to your relationships. And if you don't have close relationships right now, for whatever reason, you know, maybe Hello. you're a widow, maybe you moved, maybe your best friend died, maybe like a lot of things, yeah. maybe you went through a split with somebody that you loved and, um, and there's a lot of pain and, and stuff there. But even if it's not, you don't have those friendships yet. I, I, and I guess this is more about how some tips for making friendships, but I'll just say it now anyways, is this idea that I think we can offer that which we need ourselves. So you need a smile, offer a smile. You need affirmation, offer affirmation. You need somebody to just see you, then be a listener. Like it doesn't necessarily resolve your desire for close connection but it is a starting place it is a choice about how we show up in the world and we build small connection with other people right yeah I, I want to touch on one thing too that I've just recently noticed for myself though Erica and it's I don't know if other people feel this but I am very like I I struggle a lot with changing light and you know like the changing seasons the light um I feel deeply and for me, I've noticed that loneliness actually is a symptom of grief. So it's, it's very interesting, but I, there's a, a lot there. I have had a fair bit of loss in my life mm -hmm. and it's like this, especially in the autumn, I experienced this loneliness. That's how I, that's what I called it. And now I've realized it's this separation. It's these, the loss the the, for these people that have gone and it's like, for some reason, fall triggers part, maybe because like both my parents died in November and things like that. But, mm -hmm. but it's like, but it's also, I realized, oh, it's like, there's grief attached to this for me. And that again, all, what that requires is for me to use my introversion, my gifts of introversion to reflect and go inward and say, Hey, what's up? What is this? Yeah, just Instead of curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of like running or numbing or trying to like make yeah. it okay. And just say, I can't make it okay. Right. I have to learn to sit here with this discomfort because I can't fix this, Yeah, exactly. but I can notice it and I can just make space for it. And then I come up out of it again. So I don't know if anybody else ever has noticed that. I haven't um, experienced like the, the seasons bringing on feelings quite like that, but I am, I can definitely connect with, with your last ideas, what were you saying right then? The last thing? Uh, maybe <laughs> sitting with the discomfort, not trying yeah, to fix yes, it. Or... it. Yes, yeah. because I think that we all, um, we all develop these coping techniques that allow us to kind of hide and numb, like you said, our feelings. But I think that we can actually move through them the fastest and, and the most effectively, like really process them when we allow ourselves to feel for a little while. I yeah. love that. That's interesting about the seasons. I've never thought of that before. I'll have to think about that. More. Yeah. And for me, it's like, it happens every year, but I mean, yeah. my husband is 
fairly observant. And so sometimes he reminds me and he's like, Krista, it's that time again. You're okay. Oh, like, it's yeah. like, I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> so Yeah. Um, all right. So loneliness is different from solitude. And I think we should touch on this. So sometimes they get people um, mix them up and right. or yeah, mystifying them or whatever. Right. And so solitude is act can be a gift for the introvert, right? Mm -hmm. It can be the time to putter, to think, to hash ideas out, even to listen to podcasts. Like mm -hmm. that's my thing. I love ideas. Me too. I'm, I'm hungry for ideas. And I do like people who are interested in deep diving and discussing ideas, mm -hmm. but first I need the space to just like do it on go through own. them myself, chew yeah. on them and make them my own. And, right. um, that for me is solitude and that is a gift. Exactly. And like, I just feel like I'm going to fall apart if I don't get that. Right. Um, I think any, any introvert will hear the word solitude and feel like, feel this lightness in their heart, you know, but an extrovert might hear the word solitude and tie it with loneliness. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you were going to say about loneliness. Yeah. So yeah, loneliness, I think is sort of a longing, an ache. Um, and it's not bad either. It's actually, it might be just a, a call to listen. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And I think, interestingly, we, we judge a lot of feelings, good or bad. But I think often it's that we're being called. Again, this is a gift of introversion for those listening who identify as introverts. You're being called to listen. Yeah, absolutely. And so now you get to listen and say, okay, what is it? What do I need? As opposed to just jumping to assumption that, oh, I, I need more social activity. Like you might need that and that's fine. And there's absolutely appropriate times to push yourself out of your comfort zone and make a bid for connection and all of that. But, but first I would say, listen though, right? Learn to listen. Like what is it that you need right now? Maybe what's happening is that you need to be more vulnerable with your partner, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Maybe you need to just tell the truth about something, right. about what you need or who you are. Maybe you need to ask for help, like go get to a psychologist, <laughs> you know? You're so independent and you're so used to being the fixer of life and yeah. meeting everybody's need. But what's really happening is like you are, you know that you need to learn to ask for help as well. Like, but li so listen, right. what's, what is that, what is the message of that feeling? And, and then really loneliness like being a gift. I think that um, anytime we feel something, whether it's loneliness or anything, um, getting curious is really the first step. So getting curious about why you're feeling that instead of just trying to ignore it or numb it or um, eat or shop or drink it away, you know. So get curious, explore it, and then really try to think like you're saying about what would meet that need best. I think that's mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. All right. So let's move into just, I guess I'd like to explore a little bit some of, um, how do we, how do we shift our thinking around some of loneliness or, um, or even maybe our longing for more friendships, you know, maybe we want more connection and now how do we start even shifting our thoughts around this or, t or take action, healthy action? Okay, so I do want to bring up some, um, just so everybody knows, Erica, I sent her a few brief notes, but we're sort of just going with the flow here. So it's <laughs> a little bit messy, but I hope that it'll, it will serve you. And of course, you are always welcome to ask questions or ask for clarification. Yeah. Um, I want to bring up some ideas that we can, we'll see if, if it's worth exploring or just skirting over. Mm -hmm. But I do want to talk about this idea of like, differentiating between um introversion and shyness or social anxiety yes this is so because good. again people mix them up right yes i would say that the when i think of social anxiety i connect the word you can tell me if you do too or if this feels on track to you i connect the word fear with social anxiety so an introvert they don't necessarily have that fear to meeting people or being in the presence of other people. They might not feel a strong need for it, but they don't just, there's just not that element of nervousness or stress or fear. 
that goes with it. Is that a differentiation that you see? I think that's a good, dif- a good point of differentiation. I, I think, yeah, we, a, an introvert may be uncomfortable, say, being called to the front of a room without preparation. Right. Yeah. But they're not afraid. So they may feel a little bit trembly, a little bit like uh, uncomfortable. I'd like to ro- run right now. But right. they can do it. And they're not, they know they have what it takes to do that. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, social anxiety becomes a, a bondage, like where you feel trapped. Mm-hmm. it's and you where you actually want to be able to move beyond that but you're you are afraid I think fear fear is definitely at play there and I do want people to know that social anxiety very often can be resolved like there are some different things that help very practical there are even like nutritional supplement things that have been shown to help people with social anxiety and and in your case maybe you want to work with a functional nutritionist or a therapist or somebody, but I wouldn't just sort of accept that. I would, I want you to know that there really are supports to help you move beyond that quite successfully. Good. Yes. And And shyness too is different, isn't it? Because some of us are shy and some are not. We can be introverted, but not shy, or we can be extroverted Extroverted. and shy. (laughs) Yes. It's, it's rare, but it's, uh, whenever I see it, like in the wild, like I'm talking to a mom in the wild. Yeah. In the wild. And I can do a mom and she describes her child as like this odd mix between um, outgoing and shy, you know, and I think, oh, I wonder if that could be a shy extrovert. And then I might explore it a little more. And often that is the case. Like they, I think I've heard Susan Cain describe um, shyness as someone having just a long runway. And I often think about that with my Mm -hmm. oldest child. I have to be kind of patient with his long runway. Like it takes him a little bit longer of a time to feel comfortable. Maybe if it's going to be a big group, he likes to be there first so that other people can join, but he doesn't just jump into like a big group. That's more intimidating. Mm -hmm. So I just have to give him like a more space to like warm up the way he needs to. Um, Yeah. I think, I think I, I think shyness is fascinating. I, I felt like I was shy as a kid, but kind of out, outgrew that um, to a degree. So yeah, I think um, the differentiation between introversion and shyness and social anxiety is so important because when you understand that you're an introvert, you you kind of you can accept um, you can accept what you need. But when you notice that you might have some social anxiety or some shyness you can work to um, move past those or even even work with them, I think, in the case of shyness. Yeah. And, and also, like, respect that in your children, too. Mm-hmm. Like, I think um, there's sort of this delicate balance, like, whereby we sometimes do need to give our children a little bit of a push or help them move out of their comfort zone. Hard, yeah. But but I don't, I think we need to be cautious, like, especially if you're an extroverted parent with an introverted child that again, like about judging that tendency as wrong somehow, because you might just push them deeper into this, like into isolation or shyness because like they're not ready. Right. And I know for me as a human, I want people to respect me. And if you try to be bully, bully me or push me, I'll probably do the opposite. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> of what you want. Right. So yeah, kind of, I like that. That's why of that. I think it's beautiful for any personality to like an extrovert to listen to content about introverts, you know, because we all um, interact with introverts daily. We might be raising introverted children, even if we are extroverts and yeah. being aware of those differences really helps us not cast judgment on them. And especially with our kids, the the things that they perceive as us judging them about will probably become like baggage that they carry into adulthood and that they need to work through in adulthood. So um, the more awareness that we all have of each other's um, personality, the more ability we, the more able we are to give each other um, the space and the lack of judgment that we need. And I think that's so yeah. critical for our kids who are just still forming their perception of themselves and others. 
Yeah. And then again, the, the flip side is true too, is that we need to be aware of how we're judging other people who are different from us. So whether they're more extroverted mm -hmm. and super social, or like we have this super like talky child or, right. you know, right. um, oh, and also yes. as an introverted mom doesn't want to make their child feel bad about that. Yes. Or an introverted parent. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. And it, and, it, and it means that as a mom, we are going to be pushed out of our comfort zone mm -hmm. and because we need to be, because it isn't our job to make our child conform to us. It is our job to come alongside and support our child in like mm -hmm. becoming who they are right. meant to be. Yeah. And, yeah. So it is going to mean okay. we are going to, we are going to take them to various activities and we are going to support them as they jump on stage. And we are going right. to like do these things because it matters to them, right. not because yeah. it's easy for us. Right. right? Exactly. So, all right. So I'm just going to look at my notes here and see if there was something else I want to, well, okay. Yeah. I do actually want to talk about, again, just at least briefly this idea of shifting our expectations of what friendships should look like, mm -hmm. where we should find friends, what is an, you know, real friend and what isn't. So we've talked, touched on that briefly, mm -hmm. but I think it bears repeating because I think that um, a lot of our pain around loneliness and like wanting friends or feeling somehow like we don't quite fit and we can't connect well is um again sort of this fantastical notion of like that we've bought into about what everybody else is up to you know so actually it's even comparison right we see we see other people with their friend groups and we like feel a little bit envious or jealous. And yet we don't even want that because like, we don't want to go to all these like parties and things. No. <laughs> um, yeah. We like, or we have, listen, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, or even, you know, like my job, I laugh. I'm like, I have the best job in the world. Like I work from home in solitude about 90% of the time from behind a screen in my pajamas. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and other people would think that is just like a nightmare. Right, right. <laughs> so. right. Um, okay, so even shifting our expectations could be really useful. So noticing and challenging some of the ideas like we've bought into, like, that I should have 80 friends, or I should, um, I should have more friends. Mm -hmm. I should, I should um, want to go out for girls night. Yeah. yeah. But also even around, like, I think we judge fairly harshly. Like what if we have a friend who's a pretty cool person and yet maybe they're not what we like kind of wanted or like we we wished that they were slightly different or something but it's like maybe we should challenge our expect or we could challenge our expectation around that and say yeah but she's a gift right like right now in this season of life she's a gift like why can I not like embrace that as well right yeah I love that I think too if, that if it's we're going to accept ourselves and we yeah. talk them you and I talk so much about that I think we just have to accept others too, like with the same, the same lack of conditions, you know? Yeah, and practice scanning for beauty, living with gratitude, mm -hmm. seeing the gifts in every person that we meet. And if somebody is like, you consistently feel torn down or like really like disrespected or depleted, right. then that's probably a friendship you, you could let go of, right? Exactly, yes. I think shifting our expectations around friendships might also mean understanding that not every friendship is for forever. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they really are a gift in season and that is okay. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't we just move into, let's see, I feel I, I'm not aware of the time, but I'm pretty sure that we're probably, we need to <laughs> hustle on to the end. So we want to talk about embracing seasonal living in a sense, understanding that different seasons of life, in different seasons of life, friendships might look different, that that's okay, we can make peace with this. But I think maybe we should just go into some tips, practical tips, Erica, for like, what does that look like for people? What do we have based on our experience to offer other women um, in helping them learn how they can make some healthy connections? So let's just go there. And Okay, yeah. So when you have um, young kids, you know, because we're talking about that season of life is a little bit more what I'm in. I find that kids are just so easy to use as a conversation buffer. You know, right. so when you first meet someone, I can't, my mind kind of goes blank when I meet new people. <laughs> um, maybe that happens to others. Um, 
you can always talk about kids. So that that's really easy. So if they've got kids with them, you can ask about how old they are, or like what what school they go to, you know, just all the normal kid talk. So I love that. Then I think um, another thing about friendship is that I think we need to, like sometimes in my in, group for introverted moms, we talk about trying to make new friends, but I think we should also um, be willing to invest in our current friends. So right. sometimes that means, um, that means like going out of your way to do something kind for that friend, to help them, like, you know, to help shuttle their kids to or from soccer or whatever they might need. Um, mm -hmm. So looking at your current friendships and investing in those. Um, let's see. I think for me that it's always like a tricky balance between investing in my friendships, like wanting to be there for my friends, but also knowing that I need more space um, to be there for myself. So always like, I don't know, just playing with that balance that that can be tricky. What do you want to add about making friends? Um, I think we touched on this, but like yourself first. Mm -hmm. I think when you, yeah. or at least in conjunction with practicing making friendships is this idea of when you like yourself first, you're just far more open to the gifts in other people. Other people. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, you don't need other people to like you as much. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. um, but it means you might show up curious and you might actually make amazing friendships that if you were holding tightly to a very rigid conception of what a friendship should look like in this season, that you might miss right. this cool person in front of you that's beautiful yeah um sometimes i hear women say that they don't know like what to talk about i guess <laughs> and i would just argue that most introverts have this like natural curiosity curiosity about other people so yes. i would say just like let that be like let yourself um ask personal questions and see what happens you know yeah mm -hmm. yeah so along that, I, we'll just go bounce back and forth. So I would say one of my tips is practice vulnerability. Yeah. Um, we can't put down roots with another human without practicing vulnerability. So if you want to go deeper, you have you risk. Absolutely. It is everything. Yes. Yes. And you might be rejected or you might right. feel rejected because you don't actually know what's happening in that person's life. Right. So your um, perception. Mm-hmm. And you might find that not everybody is interested or willing to have deeper relationships. And again, that's okay, okay because they're allowed to be who they are in the world as well. Exactly. But I have also found that by me practicing vulnerability, I open the door for another woman mm -hmm. to, to let me in as well, mm -hmm. because a lot of us are guarded. Yes. And so again, it kind of comes back to the idea, offer that which you need. So make a bid for connection, practice vulnerability, risk rejection. Right. I, I really think that this is essential to building I the type agree. of friendships that we are looking for as introverts. Right. Yeah. Um, I, it reminds me of a quote from Glennon Doyle that's along the lines of the secret to being interesting is being interested. So I don't think we need to worry so much about about like us and about what makes us interesting. We just need to worry about being interested and being engaged and invested in the conversations that we have. And I could not agree more that um, vulnerability is like the door opener, you know, being willing to say like, just share any sort of struggle, you know, whether it's like, I really tend to snap at the kids at 5 PM or I, um, like we said, like, I never have anything left for my husband when he gets home, you know, just, just being willing to like risk that. And I love that you were use the word risk too, because all of this is a risk, but mm -hmm. we just have to challenge ourselves to be willing to take them. Mm -hmm. And know that. And, and, and the thing is, is like, I actually think we will be rejected, like, or at least we will, because, but I think it's important to know, like even research around mid middle age says mm -hmm. that it's one of the most challenging times of life mm -hmm. in terms of friendship because we are launching our big kids into the world. We are deeply yeah. investing in our careers. We have a marriage still to work on. Like hopefully we, be, we, we need to stay connected to our spouse if we're not going to lose each other. Right. 
um, we're Maybe caring for aging parents. parents. Mm -hmm. We're like, we're so pulled thin That's and right. hopefully at this age of life as well, we're understanding now finally the importance of caring for our own mind, body, spirit, yeah. health. Yeah. So it's not a personal a attack that somebody doesn't have <laughs> space right now. They may right. genuinely like you Absolutely. and they are just depleted and doing the best that they can. Exactly. In their exactly. life, right? Right. That's where it comes back to not, not letting everything in, you know, Just, right. And offering people the same grace that we're trying to offer ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. So along those lines, I actually want to present an idea for making friendships in probably any season of life, but one that goes against my nature, it's harder for me. And it's the idea that not every relationship actually does need to be a deep dive. Yeah. It is actually okay to just say, you know what, I, I just, I know that I spiral downward, let's say into depression if I'm not around people. So maybe I just decide I'm going to join that book club, that hiking group, that whatever, that dancing group, because I need to be around people. And it's okay that it's just going to stay on this level. And for introverts, we don't necessarily like that. Mm -hmm. But I actually am seeing this even with my clients that sometimes that is actually the appropriate response is not every relationship needs to be a deep, intimate connection. Great. Sometimes it's okay to just hang out and talk about a book together. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So, and I've heard, so one of my girlfriends asked a question. She um, is middle age, kids um, in university or that age, um, just moved from town, new city, um, and now, fortunately, she's actually an ambivert, and I think she's very, very good at making bids for connection. Mm -hmm. But, um, but it's, I'm not quite there, but I have heard other women talk about, you know, Googling online, like in your communities, you find that hiking group, you find that meetup, you find that um, you go to the Zumba class, you go, you just like put yourself out there around people, not even with an expectation that you're going to meet a best friend there, but right. just to go and enjoy yeah. doing okay. something okay. with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think maybe like, I know that I would, I tend to kind of judge that a little bit, like, I don't want that, but I see that actually I need to be pushed a little bit out of my comfort zone sometime. And I'm seeing that when my kids are all well-established, like they don't have such a need of me, I'm going to need, right. I will absolutely need, like, I'm clear that I'm going to need it. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to have the space and I'm going to push myself to kind of go engage in some different areas and just see what happens. Right. Yeah. That's beautiful. I like the idea of just taking the expectation off and accepting that sometimes um, those relationships are just companionship. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a beautiful thing too. But you know, yeah. it could, it could go deeper too. So it's just, just openness. Yeah, you do never know. And um, I think that my other tips really I've already touched on. So I actually love the idea of delighting in people. Mm -hmm. Like just like walking through life, just actually choosing to scan for beauty, yeah. you know, whether it's in our natural world or in our homes, but actually like looking for the gifts in other people that we meet. And I think that this was a huge shift for me. And I think it, it, it's my love of like personality and mm -hmm understanding like wiring and all of that has really helped me see that oh that person who sort of annoys me because of this other thing I can see how her gift is tied to that her like gifting is like the flip side of that thing which kind of rubs me the wrong way and it's like when I choose to look I'm like holy look at that look what she does because that's who she like it just I feel like it just changes my whole perspective as I move through the world. And I think that is a really good tip. I think for, if we, if we want to meet people and form friendships, we can choose to actually actively scan for the gifting. I completely agree. Yes. That's beautiful. I think that we can be patient because relationships like deep relationships can take years, mm -hmm. years and years and years and years. Um, we're all a little bit afraid and mm -hmm. guarded and, we have our own wounds and we all come into a relationship with this whole baggage and it takes us time. It takes time to trust each other. It takes time to learn forgiveness. It takes time to learn that 
um, oh, you really love me? Like, even though I've let you see this sort of less attractive side of me, you still mm -hmm. love me? Like, we're practicing, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think friendships can take time and it's worthwhile. So I think be patient. Um, I have found that that's very helpful. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes it really is better to be lonely than to be with the wrong people. Yes. <laughs> I think that's true too. I think so too. Yes. Because <laughs> uh, um, other people, you know, they, they can bring you down, just make you feel worse about yourself. Loneliness. Loneliness, at least you don't have that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and so it makes me think of um, watching somebody who's really lonely and they're searching for a life partner, mm -hmm. but they're, they're meeting people who are like so, like you can just see it's so destructive and it's like, no, don't do it. Like you'll be better alone right. than choosing to like yeah, can... right like it's like you're looking for another human to meet this deep longing in you but it's like they can't do it like it's, it's like you'll be you're better off to wait Absolutely. and stay alone for a while yes <laughs> yeah i agree okay and then i also had brought up like offer that which you need and i just am a huge believer in this too right so you need a smile then be a offer a smile like <laughs> you want people to listen to you then start listening to other people like really listen ask good questions like you said erica before it's like you know get curious about other people um yeah so okay i don't know how practical that was but i still i believe mm -hmm. in each of these tips I and i walk them out so beautiful. do you have any final thoughts on this erica that we can leave other women mm -hmm. i think i would just leave women with a simple especially introverted women um t with the simple challenge to go for it <laughs> you know because okay. sometimes we we can we can kind of hide behind um, what we perceive as the challenges of being an introvert. So like, oh, I hate small talk and I'm not quick, quick on my feet in conversations and I'd rather be home with my cat than out um, with people, <laughs> you know? And all of those things may be true. Of course they are to some extent, but if you want connection in your life, like if that's something that you value and that you think would improve your life, and like you mentioned, research is really positive on the impact of relationships on our overall happiness, then you just have to um, take that risk a little and just challenge yourself to step outside your comfort zone when, when you feel like you have the emotional bandwidth to do so. So like feed yourself, um, make sure that you're centered, um, accept who you are, I, allow other people to be who they are, and then, um, and then just challenge yourself to go for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. So thank you so much for joining me, Erica. I <laughs> hope that you. this was encouraging to other people. Sure. Um, but I loved connecting with you me too. anyways yes <laughs> um, but can yeah. you let's just end by i know you're writing a book i don't think that's secret but what, i don't know if you want to chat about that or you just want to let us know something else that you're working on or excited about okay well the book is uh on a different um topic but i think that they are interestingly related um the book is about living simply about minimalism but I think minimalism appeals uh, to introverts in a lot of ways because it's kind of about quieting the noise in your life. So right. my book isn't just about the stuff, you know, in our homes. It's really about what we're filling our lives with and um, how we can design lives that are built on our values. And I think that kind of concept usually resonates with um, introverts. That will be coming out in March. So I'm excited about that. Um, and then maybe I'll, in the comments, I can just leave like the a link to a couple of the freebies that I have for introverted moms. So I have, yes. one, uh, I have one that's about um, just 12 tips for introverted parents from other introverted parents and just a PDF. Mm -hmm. So people are welcome to grab that. And then I also have a video about... Um, it's like a crash course in making mom friends, especially yeah. as an introvert. And it covers a lot of these um, ideas. Um, but if anybody wants 
to grab that, we can add that as well. And I will awesome. probably launch my e-course or open it again for registration, the Introverted Moms e-course in January. I was really hoping to do it in the fall, but I got this great opportunity to write a book. So I'm going to practice minimalism in this one sense and just stick, yeah. with, stick with that for now. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. adding those links. Yeah. Erica. I'll okay. do that now. Okay. Thanks. It was a pleasure. You're amazing. You always inspire me. Oh, thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.